Well, hello, everybody. I'm back. You're back. So what we're going to do today is talk about more RVs. Some interesting ones I found. A lot of ones you guys have sent in to me, so I'm going to include those this time around. And let's get going. And let's remember, this is just for fun. Let's not take it too seriously, huh? And one of our viewers, Mark L., he sent me this one in. And yeah, I'm not sure what the motif exactly is here, but I can see a Homer Simpson, and that's all I care about. I'm a huge Simpsons fan. So, you know, A-plus on the paint job of this old RV. And Mike P. sent me this one. Now, this is this a boat or an RV? Uh, it really, you know, I first saw it, I, I thought it was, you know, is this some kind of converted boat? But I can see it's it's just some sort of, you know, modified little mini bus or something that's been turned into this boat-looking style uh, thing. I got this buddy of mine, Brendan, who's an avid diver. I could just see him rolling up to his dive sites and going and driving around with this thing with his scuba gear in the back. Uh, this is a sweet little boat-like RV. I mean, let's face it, there's not much difference between a boat and an RV, except one goes on the water, one has wheels, and both are going to cost you way too much money. I mean, could you imagine an RV that's actually also a boat? Let's take a look at one of those. Right here, you've got these folks who seem for years have been working on various editions of these Class A RVs that can float. I remember years and years ago seeing the first one, and now that I look around, I see they've got a couple of different versions out there over the years. I don't know if this ever went into production, if it was ever being sold, or if this is just somebody with too much time and an awesome idea. But yep, here is a Class A RV just heading straight out the boat ramp and straight into the water. True amphibious RV. You know, this reminds me, when I first started RVing, there was this service that was out in Mississippi. Uh, and it had already, I believe, gone under. But a few different places tried this. They would take a really massive barge, and you would get on it at one end of the Mississippi, and then it would sail the entire Mississippi with a whole bunch of RVs on the barge. And I always thought, why not? Why can't you put an RV on a barge? Why can't you put a single RV on a barge? And then it becomes a houseboat. Uh, I think there's something out there for this. But then again, who wants to put their $200,000 RV on some little floating ramp of a, of a barge? But in this case, it was a very large barge. I understand they had it modified. So it had like a black tank built into the barge so you could dump and all that. It had a water tank so you could load up with, with fresh water and all that. It seemed like a real treat, but I, maybe it's a little hard to make that cost effective. And I understand there's been a few attempts by a few companies to do this, and they've all gone under. If anyone knows of any place where you can take your RV onto a barge or some type of extended voyage, I know you can go on ferries, but uh, even then, you, know, you often can't visit the RV while it's being transported. So I'd love to know, is there some place where you can just take your RV on a boat? That's my kind of cruise ship. Let's look at this guy, Tim Johnson, or Truck House Life, on YouTube. He has a cabin built on the back of his rather heavy-duty truck. I think it's a one-ton or maybe three-quarter. He uh, built it by scratch you know, up there in Alaska. He's clearly handy and, and knows his stuff. Uh, it's got a wood stove. It's rather cozy and really solid. Uh, I've been really impressed over the years how much it just holds up. It, it's a non-issue. His truck has issues, but the house on his back doesn't seem to have any issues at all. Uh, he's got his own place in Alaska, so sometimes he'll do videos from his home base. Uh, but most of the time, he's doing stuff from the road. I remember a couple of years ago during the pandemic, they wouldn't let him through at the Canadian border because he had a kayak on his roof, I think. And, you know, he was going to relocate down to the States for a while during the pandemic because he had that kayak on the roof. They thought it was non-essential travel, and they wouldn't let him cross. That's a real interesting thing being up in Alaska is you're sort of cut off. You can drive on the ferry, you can drive through Canada, or you can fly. Those are your only three choices when you live up in Alaska. I want to thank Cindy C., one of my most ardent followers, and she's a Patreon member. Uh, she, she suggested that we include him on the next one, and so great idea, Cindy. Thank you. Make sure to check out his channel. I'm putting a link in the description, uh, Truck House Life. It's definitely a good, entertaining channel. If you like RV channels or channels like mine, you'll love his. He's a real pro. But clearly, he's not the only one who's built his own cabin. Here's one where they built a cabin on a very old truck. I don't even know if this thing rolls anymore, but this thing's got to weigh so many thousands of pounds. Somebody put together this corrugated shack on a truck. I found this one to be yet another example of build your own on the back of the truck. This was sent to me by another uh, viewer, Thomas H. He sent me this really old timey photo here where you can see all the way back in the day they were building houses and cabins on the back of vehicles. I don't know what kind of car this is. What is it, Model T? Maybe somebody out there can tell me. They're actually driving using that window on the side of the house that's built there. Uh, I don't know uh, if you really got great visibility driving that thing, but it doesn't look like it goes very fast anyway. And if you can build a log cabin on the back of a truck, why not build a trailer out of logs? Uh, I don't know if this is just plastic or what. I believe this was a Burning Man, um, potentially. Uh, but yeah, here we go. You've got your log cabin RV trailer. And this one's similar, but it looks like it's just a wrap. So somebody's got some kind of log cabin wrap, 
and put it around their trailer. I thought it was a real ingenious way. It looks like, you know, not the most expensive trailer, too. So a nice way to sort of spruce it up and make it special, huh? They even got the little decals on the windows. They really paid attention to detail on this one. I thought it was cute. I always wanted to put a wrap around my trailer as well. And, you know, this starts to blur into that tiny home kind of environment where, you know, where does it become a trailer versus a tiny home? Uh, you know, here you've got a, a, a log cabin that you can move anywhere, but it's basically on wheels. It's a trailer, right? So, you know, what would you classify this? Is this a trailer or a tiny home? I guess a lot of it has to do with the toilet, right? If it's a traditional toilet, then it's probably a tiny home. And if it's got an RV flush toilet and tank on board, well, then I guess we'd call that a trailer. What's your thoughts on that? Comment below. And this is like a whole nother level. It's kicking a tiny home and starting to make it into a normal home. This is still sitting on a trailer, but I'm pretty convinced this one is not really designed to travel. This is sort of designed to be moved into place and possibly relocated. But I don't think this one's going anywhere. This is just some sort of hodgepodge put together. Um, I'm guessing this car moves. But, you know, the good news is, is no matter how many tarps and how much random wood they've slapped together on the roof of that car, they got a nice orange strap there holding it down, so that's not going anywhere. Hey, do not forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and if you've got some cool RV or some crazy RV setup you want to share with me and put on the channel here, send it my way. You can hit me up at rvingwithjoe at gmail.com. Send away, and I'll give you a shout out in the video if I use it. You might remember in my last video, I had this VW camper up wondering, what the heck is this? Is this custom built? I had a lot of you comment uh, telling me about, no, this is actually a production build. I don't think it was made by Volkswagen, but it was made by a company who was turning these out. And in fact, one of our viewers, Todd P, sent me some information on this, sent me an actual brochure with additional diagrams. And he found me another version of this one. This one was a yellow bug uh, with the same style. So apparently this was a thing. I mean, we know you can pretty much strap anything onto a VW bug and make it work. Whether it's making it into a Baja, whether it's making it into a three wheel motorcycle, these bugs are pretty much a tinker toy set for anyone who wanted to build something new with them. Fun fact, when I was a young kid, it was a VW bugs where I learned how to drive a stick. If you can drive a VW bug manual transmission, you can drive any car with a manual transmission. And our other viewer, Thomas H., also sent me this, a YouTuber who actually took one of those uh, VW Beetles, those newer Beetles that were pickup style, and once again put his own shell on the back. This one's a little different than the last one I showed you in the last video, a little more kitted out for sure. You can also check out his YouTube channel. I'll link it below. Here's the sample. That's awesome. You like it? <laughs> it's the best gas mileage in a camper you're ever going to get. 35 gallons, or 35 miles a gallon. It's a diesel. It's got a 1.8 turbo in it. Here we got folks who are putting their trailers up on stilts. I guess this is mostly rooted around the idea that they have flooding and they didn't want to get flooded out again. You see this down in the southeast of the United States where, you know, whole neighborhoods are built up on stilts. And that way, when the next hurricane comes through or with, you know, rising sea levels, uh, this can become an increasing problem. So here are folks just taking it upon themselves to build a platform, a little tree house, if you will, and then putting their trailer up in the tree house. It does seem like it's starting a trend. I was able to find a whole lot of examples out there where people have actually taken these trailers and just lifted them into the air and put them above the uh, ground in stilts. Hey, you know what? I could call my ma while I'm up here. Hey, ma! Get off the dang roof! I swear, some of these look like they're straight out of, like, walking dead, defensible, you know, hunting platforms. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, again, you're no longer having to worry about flooding. And, let's face it, in the zombie apocalypse, this may not be the worst thing. Jas S sent this to me. This RV to me looks like it's actually a movie set dressing room setup. As a matter of fact, a lot of the trailers or star trailers uh, that you see both in Los Angeles and up here in, in Vancouver that are on set are actually really built on RVs. They're RV chassis. They're often just custom built for this purpose. And here's a great example where they've got multiple doors, probably each one's for like a little makeup trailer or a little star trailer. Sometimes they can be multi-purpose rooms for various trades people. It really depends on what the need is. But uh, that's clearly what this is, uh, or at least it seems like that to me. Um, here's an example of a more formal one that you see on set where basically they can drop this anywhere and immediately many people can can enter the, the building and it's not just used in movie sets right there are other uh areas and other industries where this type of rv is set up it's not really recreational but if you go inside you'll find that all the fixtures the door handles it's all the same as what you see in an rv 
Also from JS, thanks for this pick. Uh, here we go. This is like some military turducken here. Let's let's try to, to break apart what we've got here. We've got this military six by six, I'm guessing, uh, with some sort of trailer taken off the chassis and strapped to the back. Of course, they're using those yellow straps, so you know that that's not going anywhere. But uh, in addition to the military truck with the some sort of shell on the back, that's shelter, obviously. It's got windows and stuff. Then you've got this uh, dolly that they've set up. I asked about it in one of my last videos. A lot of people schooled me that you can have these dollies in between. Often it's a fifth wheel dolly where the dolly attaches to the vehicle in front, the tow vehicle, with a traditional bumper pull hitch, but then it has in the middle of it a fifth wheel to attach to a fifth wheel trailer. And that's what we see going on here. This is basically turducken. And if you haven't seen me explain turducken in my previous videos, here's a little sample of what turducken is. Turducken is when you take a chicken and you cook it inside a duck and you cook that duck inside a turkey. So you've got a chicken inside a duck inside a turkey called a turducken. It tastes awesome. However, it's not necessarily the best model for towing. So somewhere in an Asian country, maybe China, this is a turducken of certain sorts, but this is a delivery truck upon delivery truck upon delivery truck. And here's to show you that turducken is nothing new. Trailer turducken's been going on for a long time. Look at this old picture here with this classic car, some 50s or 60s model, something or another, pulling this trailer, pulling a boat, pulling it all at once. Uh, this is nothing new. And like a lot of you folks uh, commented in my last videos, it's perfectly legal in a lot of states, and it's very illegal in other states. So I guess it depends on what state you live in, whether or not you can pull this kind of stuff off. Now here's something I've never seen before. Have you ever seen this where a tractor will be delivering other tractors and they've got some custom mount between them all? Now I have seen this a few times, but I've never seen it with a pickup truck hanging out on the end. Uh, if I had to guess, this is a delivery driver who's gonna take these to a location and then you know use his truck to return back. But uh, however this is set up, this is a unique setup. And I keep thinking like, what kind of custom fifth wheel mount do you have in the back to make this setup work? Um, Never seen that before in my life. And here's another classic turducken. This this really isn't necessarily so amazing or crazy, but it just looked nice. I like the tow vehicle. I like the way they've got the um, the the camper shell mounted on this 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 trailer, and it really it almost looks like they measured it to fit or built it custom. Like everything fits just right, and you've got this sweet ass off road gray on the back. Uh, and then the nice thing about this kind of setup. When they do finally settle into a campsite, that whole back trailer becomes this great raised deck, right? Up above the weather and all that, a place to throw out uh, some chairs and a barbecue. Um, I really like these setups. And, uh, you know, in the future, I've thought about trying to do something custom. But you know how it is. Time, money, blah, blah, blah. I just end up buying something pre-built and ready to go. And some of these turducken truck setups can get really long. Now here you've got a heavy duty truck, like a full big rig, pulling a fairly decent sized fifth wheel and then the trailer on the back. Uh, you know, clearly this tow vehicle can handle it. And this probably isn't really unsafe or even that sketchy out there on the road. Um, but it certainly takes up a lot of space. And this one takes up even more space. In fact, I bet you the only place that this guy can park is at the Walmart parking lot, which is where you see him right now. I mean, I tried to estimate it, assuming that that trailer in the back is around 35 feet or maybe longer. This whole thing has got to be pushing into 70 feet. How do you make a turn on city streets with a setup like this? I mean, you need two lanes to make a turn with this one, I got to believe. And finally, yep, those heavy duty trucks, they can certainly handle a lot. Uh, I could, you know, in a perfect world, if I had all the money in the world and my wife wouldn't totally hate it, I would absolutely have one of these heavy duty transportation trucks as my tow vehicle. Uh, they can tow anything, anywhere, anyhow, and you can always bring a little toad in the back like these folks for driving around town once you park. Of course, you're going to need a lot of space when you drive around, but, but if you're down in the desert or up here in BC, there's more than enough space around. You know, these aren't the only kind of videos I make. I actually do a lot of travel videos, so feel free to check out my channel and see the other types of video I've done. Like the long trip I did down in the Southwest, going to all the coolest locations, lots of drone footage, down to Hurricane where Matt's off-road recovery is. Uh, I've been all over the Southwest with this trailer and, uh, you know, got a lot of videos to prove it. So feel free to go check those out as well. Lance N sent this in to me. This is actually a custom-built C-Class RV that he built himself. So yes, it's kind of a C-Class, but it's entirely custom built. He basically took a van, chopped it up, built this whole back seat area within the van, and then got a stock standard camper that would go in the back of a truck and mounted it over the whole van. And he kept that entirely stock. So you have this very customized cut up van and this very stock um, 
camper shelf went on top, making it uh, basically a, a legit camper, you know, inside there. But I don't know if it's originally a Class C unless he's got a walkthrough, right? Because in a Class C, you got to be able to go from the driver's seat to the back. But I don't care. This is awesome. So thank you very much for sending this in, Lance. I see you're in Oregon, so I'll be keeping my out for this rig when I go back and forth up north to California and back, which I do a lot. I only mention that because I can tell in my comments how much you all love California. Now, I was talking about building your own Class C, but why not build your own Class C bicycle? That's what these brothers did. Uh, they got a YouTube channel where they went and actually built kind of this over-the-cab looking Class C style trailer, but on the back of a three-wheeled bicycle or tricycle. The goal was to take it 100 miles uh, across the whole Los Angeles basin uh, out to Santa Monica. And the first round, the first one they built, just didn't quite make it. First of all, it wasn't electric power assisted and it was like 500 pounds and it just was falling apart all over the place. But they learned from those lessons and they built version two, a little more fiberglass and nice style, a little more upgrade. And this one actually worked. It, they also put in an electric motor and a battery so they were able to use electric assist to pedal that way. And they were able to make it all the way across Los Angeles up to Santa Monica. It worked. And while one person's pedaling, the other person gets to just hang out in the back and they can just trade off. It was a funny little setup. I mean, it was mostly done for the clicks in their YouTube channel. But I was really impressed with what they pulled off and how it actually worked. And they even had a little electric motor in there so you could turn on the sink and wash your hands and, you know, make dinner and all that stuff in this tiny little bicycle built RV. Now, they're not the only ones to have built a kind of RV on a bike situation. Uh, both over in Europe and here in North America, people have built various versions of this. But this is the first time I ever saw it really the look and feel of a traditional RV and not some specialized bike trailer uh, that's you know on steroids and finally why build it on a bike when you can build it on a motorbike so here's someone who's got it built onto a motorcycle i mean i don't know if you'd call this a motorcycle it's got dualies in the back but uh this apparently has been spotted in multiple locations i was able to find multiple pictures of it and i only wish i could see the inside this looks like an awesome rv i want to roll into a campground with this bad boy special thanks goes to gerald v who saw this crazy truck in Chehalis, uh, Washington State. Um, I have been staring at these pictures multiple times trying to make heads or tail. Are these even hard-sided walls? Are these cloth walls? Does this thing even have like a flat floor? It all is so uneven and, and almost like it was just built one, one piece of wood at a time with no written plan or something. Uh, now, I'm sure they had some plans and, and it does seem to work. I asked Gerald and apparently this has been seen in multiple locations around Washington State. So this thing actually does drive down the road. Uh, I don't know what kind of mileage it gets. I don't know how this stuff doesn't just go flying off on the freeway, but hey, apparently they've made it work. Um, you know, it's built on a Ford. It's definitely one of the craziest ones in this video. And it's why I'm giving this particular RV my Ford tip of the hat gold star award. Uh, for the craziest Ford with an RV on top. Um, this one's going to win for this particular episode. So congratulations and thanks a lot for sending me these pics. They were wild. Now, as a YouTuber, I get a lot of comments and uh, some of them are awesome and supportive. Some aren't quite so supportive. So I thought I'd do a quick review of some of my comments I've been getting. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So Patrick Loring, 6914, uh, he liked one of my recent videos saying that was funny. I mean, that's the whole reason I'm doing this, so it's great to hear it. I just wanna make people laugh. I just like to laugh myself a lot. So this was a good one to see. American Woman 835 says, love the commentary, hate the music. Yeah, okay, so I use music to try to accentuate my videos. If you're noticing it, then I'm not doing a good enough job, but uh, you're gonna keep hearing music in my videos. That's the way it is. I'm a musician, I like music in my videos. And Scotty J8135 says, after muted, it wasn't so bad. Can't triple stamp a double stamp. You can't triple stamp a double stamp, Lord. I guess he doesn't like my videos. At Rocker Red likes my videos. And they said, thanks for the laughs. Gave me a few emojis. Thank you, Rocker Red. That's the kind of feedback I consider good feedback. Moose's Valley writes, great video showing some crazy stuff. Perhaps some of those turduckins should be called turd duckins. Ugh. Bad joke, but thanks for replying. I really appreciate it. <laughs> and Craig Combellic 4917 wrote, You are a moron. <laughs> you are a f***ing moron. Too rough. Much too rough. Hey, I can think of a few people who agree with you there, Craig. A lot of 3264 wrote, I found my new channel. Thank you for the laughs. I needed this video today. Thank you, Lotta. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And that's what I'm here for. 
BMA0522 wrote, Worst take ever from a regular Joe. Are you trying to get your next RV for free? You sound like you work for the industry. This is in response to my Lemon Law video, which I'll link right here, where I actually said I didn't think there should be Lemon Laws for RVs because they're luxury goods and not cars. And, and I know that a lot of people didn't agree with me, and that's fine. You don't have to agree with me. But, uh, you know, I am a free market kind of guy. Even though I live in Canada, you know, I'm a cold-blooded American capitalist when it comes down to it. And uh, it'd be hard for you to call me a communist, which is exactly what Gary QC 6 sp wrote. I hate your videos, and you are a communist piece of sh**. Okay. Are you a communist? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I'm not a communist. I'm definitely a capitalist. I love money. In fact, you can join my Patreon for four dollars. That's it, four U.S. dollars a month. You can join my Patreon right now. Just think about joining Patreon because I've got a whole lot of content coming there real soon. Thanks, Gary. And finally, let's end on one of the good ones. Yo, man, how do I submit a photo to you? Well, it's pretty easy. Just go to rvingwithjoe at gmail.com. Send an email that way with whatever pictures you might have. And hopefully they can make it into my next video. If they do, I will give you a shout out in my video. But thanks for asking. User OK2V1Y1205, you know. And so that was it. That's the third video of this series I've done. I'd love to hear feedback from you. Feel free to comment below, tell me what you didn't like about this video, what you like about this video. Uh, I got a whole lot of comments telling you my eyebrows are too long. Um, whatever you feel like, feel free to comment below. Uh, do you love Fords? Do you hate Fords? You know I'm a Ford guy. I'd love to hear it from you. Comment below. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. And hey, you might want to think about clicking on one of these videos right here, down here, or down here. Any of these three videos are worth watching. Thanks again for coming along to my channel. And make sure to check out my channel for some of the other kinds of videos I do, like travel videos or RV advice videos. I hope to hear from you. And remember, get busy living. <sighs> yeah.